I'm just going to say good afternoon again to yeah. the folks here and to the new folks that are here. Um, I'm going to start a little bit early since you folks are here and kind of just circle around and come back because um, Ms. Rees will be here for a couple hours this afternoon signing some books for folks. Um, so we'll continue for a couple hours here. But um, first I'm going to tell you about Ms. Rees. I met her back in November. She called me up and she was telling me about this book that she had and then she said, I wrote a book about my family. I said, okay. And then I said, just like, okay. <laughs> and then she said, you don't understand. It's a real book. It's not just about my family. It is about something everybody will enjoy. And I said, okay, come on over. She came and talked to me. I was with her a minute and a half, and I knew that she had to do a talk about her book and have her book here. And you can see she did a lot of research. Mm -hmm. You started 2013. Was when the book was published. But when did you start Whoa, researching? I started way back. That's right. So we tried to get her here in February, but everybody knows how bad February was. So finally now, with Mr. Tucker, and then you finally get here in, in March, and it rains today. But it's still a good day, and I want to tell you a little bit about her book. Her book is titled Destined to Achieve the Journey of African American Family by Evelyn Parker Reeves. Now, this book is about the William Carter Parker Sr. and Valley Tyson Simon Parker family. The book depicts how this family maintains their faith in God, have love for family, family roots, neighbors, surviving in a diverse community, and know the importance of a good education. Everybody has a dream and a story. There were stories told that capture the imagination of each child. In this book, you will discover that we are not able to run away from hard times. We always continue to with the chores until they were completed. We are a humble family. When you read this book from cover to cover, you will understand how this family understands life struggles, hard times, and good times. Therefore, we are able to endure the hardships and enjoy our labor. Introducing Miss Evelyn Parker Reeves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lauderdale, for inviting me to the Black History Cultural Center. I'm most grateful to you. And thank you all for coming. As Ms. Lauderdale said, the name of my book is Destined to Achieve the Journey of an African American Family. Now, I have to walk while I talk. I just can't stand still. Okay. This book goes back six generations. It goes back to my uh, great-great-grandmother and great-great-grandfather who were slaves. And my grandfather, uh, Henry Armstead Jr., Parker Jr., he was the first free-born slave in our family. Now, in this book, it's a lot of family information. I had one sister ask me, well, of course, let me tell you first, it's 14 of us. It was 14 of us. I had 10 brothers and three sisters. Well, since then, uh, 2013, since I've started the book, I've lost three of my brothers. So my baby sister, she's always been fascinated. So she wanted to know when she looked at the book, she says, well, Evelyn, why is there so many pictures or images in there about you and your family? <laughs> she's talking about my Reed's family. I say, it's my book. <laughs> <laughs> if you want pictures of in your book, then you write your own book. It wouldn't be fair to me to write a book and not put most of my family in there, and put you know all of your family in there. So we chuckled about it and we moved right along. But in this book, it has um my mama and my dad, and of course I dedicated this book to my mama and my uh, and my daddy. And of course, um, I have images of my mama's family and my, my daddy's family. Then I break it down into the 14 children, beginning with my oldest sister, 
and her family all the way down to my baby brother, Tony, and his family. And of course, Daddy taught us work ethics. He taught us how to work. When I say work, I mean work. Mama stayed in the house and she taught us about the Bible. So in this book, you will see that I have a lot of scriptures from taken from the uh, Bible that shows that we came from a religious family. And we had to go to church, rain, sleet, snow. And of course, when I was a little girl, we didn't have automobiles or trucks. So we had to walk it. But they were interested in us going to church, learning about the Lord, and getting a good education. Now, what is amazing about our family, out of the 14 of us, there are 13 of us who are college graduates. Ooh, and of course, we work in different fields. Um, my brothers, they wanted to be their own boss, you know. Dad bossed them all of those years, so they went from one job to another one until they said, okay, that's not for me. I'm going to go into business for myself. So I have a brother that's old, ne next oldest brother in Greensboro, North Carolina. He has a shop, Red Hanger. And he also owns a funeral home there, community funeral home, and he has a barber shop where he helps the uh, nieces and the nephews get started by letting allow them to come and work under him with his supervision. And they have done well. And of course, uh, my sisters, uh, I have a sister that's in New York. She's a, a licensed beautician. You know, they call them cosmetologists now, whatever. And then I, <laughs> all these fancy things. Then I have a sister here who is, uh, received her master's from Virginia Commonwealth University in a, uh, adult education. Also in this, I'm going to fast forward a little bit, so I'm not going to bore you. I want you to, I want to pass the books out so you can get a look at it and get a feel of it and see how you like it and everything. I went back and did a lot of research because I felt like our children, this generation, needed to know about their elders. They needed to know how long they lived. And of course, I had a birthday this past Wednesday, and I had to guess in a few minutes how old I am. <laughs> I think that these children need to know how old their parents or how old their relatives live and what they died from. Mm -hmm. Because this day and time, when we go to the doctor, we need to tell the doctor what went on in our family, what disease our parents died from. And if a lot of times they don't know. But I did a lot of research on what the family members before me died from how long they live. And of course, they didn't eat like we eat today. Um, it was very different. Now, you know, everybody is sort of health conscious. But I still feel that you need to know what your mama died with. You need to know what your father died with, or your siblings. That would help you and help the doctor to keep you healthy and live much longer. Mom lived to be 875. Daddy died at an early age. He lived to be 71. But my great great grandmother lived to be 104. Now I don't know what she ate. I don't know what she drank, but that's how old she was. And of course, in this book also, like I said a few minutes ago, I started with my oldest sister and her family, and I went all the way down to the 14 of us to my uh, baby brother. And of course, um, my nieces and nephews, of course, my children, they've done well. They have been very successful. I have a daughter, a son and a daughter. Both of them are college graduates and of course, both of them have their masters 
in different areas. And I just attended my niece's graduation from Howard University this past summer, and she, re she received her doctorate in microbiology. So education has been the thing in our family. Now, when we first moved into the community, we lived in a little shack. You know, does anyone know what a little shack is? Well, that's what we lived in, and we outgrew the little shack, so Daddy built this house. Well, we couldn't figure out at the time why you build this house in this community, but we were right in the back of the school. So there was no excuse for us not attending school <laughs> every day. We could, you know, walk to school and walk back. Of course, when we started to high school, it was a different thing. We had to ride 12 miles on the school bus, which we didn't think about going downtown, which was just a mile from where we live, but we had such a good time, fun time, getting on that, they call it the cheese bus, getting on that bus each morning and riding those 12 miles. It was very exciting, very exciting, because we had one goal in mind, we wanted a very good education, okay? So in the book also, um, I have recipes, I have mom's recipe in here, which I have not been able to master yet. But I'm going to back up a few minutes. When uh, Uncle Cornelia and Uncle Amos from West Virginia used to come to visit us, I always wanted to know what mom and Uncle Cornelia talked about. So what I would do, I would get my place at the sink. You know, I'm not washing the dishes, but I'm listening to what they are talking about. So. I wasn't able to write it at that particular time, so I put it in my memory bank. I don't, re I don't recall when I learned how to write, but one day I le did learn how to write. So I kept all of these notes. I have, my daughter used to say, Mama, what you want to bring home today? Bring me another binder. These binders are full of information because all during the night, I would get up and I'd write it down. But Mama and Uncle Nelly doing that conversation, they had no idea that I was listening to what they were talking about. So I retained all that information. Then one day Mama said, Evelyn, I think you need to write this, you know, write a book. And I said, well, you know how you get busy with other things? And I said, well, I'm going to do it one day, Mama. She said, but it needs to be documented. You know, this is history. So then one day I decided to put everything aside and write this book. But with Mama's recipe with the chicken dumplings, mm -hmm. I have not mastered that yet. But now my brother Alan and his wife make the best sweet potato pie. I mastered that. I can make a sweet potato pie. And of course I have another sister-in-law and my brother would always say, now, my wife might have a lot of faults, but cooking is not one of them. Mm -hmm. And she's from Chirol, South Carolina, or Patrick, South Carolina. She can really cook. So I hope I didn't bore you all with my book, mm -hmm. and I'd be more than glad to share, you know, let you hold the book and look through the book and discuss it if you would like to. Where is your family from you never mentioned? I'm sorry. You never mentioned where your family originates from. I'm sorry. North Carolina, Mount Gilead, North Carolina. Have you heard of Greensboro, North Carolina? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of Charlotte, North Carolina? <coughs> yes. But we're just a little village in between those two towns. It's Montgomery County. Uh, did you bring a sample of those uh, chicken dumplings? Hey, <laughs> I'm not going to master it. I mean, I'm just sure going to eat it. <laughs> that I'll wasn't good eating. Yeah. It wasn't good eating. And every year, what we try to do we try to instill our values with our nieces and our nephews. So every August, we have this big celebration and we go home. You know, like a lot of them have the time shares. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell them that Mount Gilead, the little house in Mount Gilead, that's John, Johnny is my husband, he's out in Las Vegas right now. But anyway, I tell them that's our time share. We go there, we have no television. 
We have no telephone. We just have each other. And we talk, I tell him all the time, and I know he gets tired of hearing it, but he listens anyway. At least he pretends he listens. I tell him all about the childhood. Growing up there in that little house, 14 of us in that little house. Eating the chicken and dumplings, I can listen all day. Eating the chicken and dumplings, I can listen to you all day. Oh, yes, nice. <laughs> and Mom, Cornelia, she used to make these little hoe cakes. Okay. And uh, on top of the stove. Yeah, on yeah. top of the stove. Oh, and my school. brother Will, he just, well, we loved Aunt Cornelia dearly. We loved her. She was so precious. And every time she would, they would come to visit us, he would run up to her. He said, Aunt Cornelia, are you going to make us some of those little whole cakes? And he said, she said, she laughed. She said, sure, I'm going to make you some of those little whole cakes. I was had a book signing some time ago, and some of the people had not never had never heard of a little whole cake. So I had to explain to them, it's just a great it's big a biscuit, and you turn it over on top of the stove, like we do cornbread. Are y'all familiar with flipping the cornbread on top of the stove? Well, for well, back for pancakes instead. Hard. Eat, eat those cornbread things for pancakes. Okay. It's okay. Than the cornbread. Okay, we can relate to that. So it was called we called little whole cakes because Mama made the biscuits, yes, but it wasn't it wasn't big and flat like Uncle Name would make. And she was so precious, and she and Mama had the best time together talking about their children and how they came up and how it was different then. And Mama always prayed, bless her heart, that. She would live until all of her children got grown. And God answered her prayer. He answered her prayer. Like I said, Mom died at 87 five, and Tony was grown. He's the baby. Tony was grown and had his family. So Mom was able to see all of her children grow up and produce children. Not 14, you know, but produce some. Okay? So if you would like to... Um, Look at my books. I'd be more than glad to pass it out to you. Um, I have, a, I have a two, two questions. When did your family move to Virginia? Pardon? When did your family we move? We moved here in, in July of 1975. Uh -huh. And uh, my husband came first because he was working at the A&P store in Southern Pines, North Carolina. And of course, you know, I'm an educator. And I had to stay the rest of the year, you know, because I had two children. We didn't want to uplift the children out of that um, environment or out of their school and come. So I, he came on, then I came after the children had finished school. Um, so we came here in 1975. There's another question in my first what, uh, <laughs> oh, but, oh, 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 the 14 children. What's the, what's the, um, the age? What was the span of years that she had 14 children in? Like uh, 20 years? The, you know, from the oldest to the youngest, what's the age between our oldest uh, My and oldest sister who is still living, like I said, I have two brothers, three brothers that have passed. My oldest sister would be 85 next month. And, and, then the and my baby one. brother was born in 1954. So he will turn 61 this July the 12th. July, I'm sorry, July the 11th. One from 85? You said 85 was the oldest and 61 is the youngest? Right. They were busy. 24. 21 years. Like I said, so, every now and then. Anyone would like to guess how old I am? 39. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> and of course, and I have some and, cars. And what's your packing order? Okay, the oldest is. My oldest are is. Are you in the middle one? or? Pardon? Are you in the middle? No, I'm the fourth. You're number four. You're 71. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Oh. Are you? No. Oh. Seventy-one. You in the seventies? <laughs> no, that's wonderful. Thank you. Sixties. Oh, isn't that great? Oh my goodness! Let me get a book for you. Okay. Oh, thank you. Sixty-one. What made you say that? Good, huh? She's what made you say that? You're I'm in the four. neighborhood. You're number four? In the neighborhood. I'm number four. You're number I'm in the four. neighborhood. Oh, you are? Oh, you're okay. You. You're 80. So. 25. I'm sorry. Twins of any time? The, the books are $25. Were they in the twins? No. 
You're selling a salmon. Okay. I don't know what I was selling this salmon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 80. Congratulations. Oh, thank when you. When was your birthday? My birthday was March 11th. This past Wednesday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. See your husband's in Las Vegas. Yes, he's out in Las Vegas. He'll be back Thursday. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. How long did it take to uh, compile your book? It took me a long time. Like I say, I would tell my daughter each day, bring me another binder. You know, put the information in. It took a good while. Yeah, I kept your pictures over the years, and everybody, now like this week and last week were not good days to get out, so what I did, I spent my time compiling pictures, compiling more pictures. I have volumes and volumes of albums with family pictures in them. And I and when mama when I knew mama was passing, I never shared this, but I'll share it. I went to the house and I took mama's albums mm -hmm. because I knew if someone did not take it that was responsible and could keep up with them, they would just be anywhere and we, we would lose that history. Mm -hmm. So I took all of, I think she might have maybe had maybe four, about this thick. I took all of them, and of course I have pictures in there of mama and dad when they were young. Mm -hmm. I took them and brought them to my house, and whenever my family was going to come to visit me, I'd hide them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they would take them, you know, they would take them, and that's how I was able to... Did you, have all these pictures. I didn't it's always funny how they would have the, even though my mom would hide the book, or the pictures would be on the wall, a couple of days after everyone left, we come back and we say, what is the picture right there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they still get them. Disappear. The only thing you can do now is make a copy of it. Put it in the Xerox. That's right. Copy, so put, so put the copy up. Right. And hide the original. Yeah, right. right. You say right. Yeah, from Washington. Well, Eric, Eric is from, uh, from, from some parts of New York. I'm not for okay. sure whether he was born and reared there, okay. but Eric married my niece, Michelle Fawcett. Mm -hmm. okay. Sure did. Wow. What I would like for you all to do um, while you're looking through the book is uh, let me get your name and telephone number and all, and then I will, uh, I will autograph your books. I didn't ask for that. Um, I have another question. Sure. Uh, my question oh, okay. is, um, That's so good. the photo, That's a good I think it's fairly really important, like, I know in my family, um, because finally, you know, some people in my family trusted me, and I started getting some photographs from folks, but also my grandmother had a little, I don't know if you remember the little train cases, that, the little, they're about this big, they were little, um, cosmetic boxes, okay. mm -hmm. and he would take them on a train with them, okay. and my, my grandmother had a bunch of photos in there, and the thing is, is that she died in 84, mm -hmm. this is my father's mother, okay. and I finally got these photographs in the 90s sometime, okay. and but there was nobody to explain who some Who's of the there? folks in the oh. photographs are, especially oh. the real old photographs. Okay, I can, I can, I know about every image that I have in that book. Wow. Yes. You know, I was a very good listener, and mm -hmm. Daddy shared a lot. Now, where there's a blank also, I've got to go to North Carolina probably this summer, because there's, I don't have enough information on my mother's family. I have a lot of information on my daddy, mm -hmm. but when I got to Mama's daddy, it was just a blank, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, no, and I know it's some there. I know it has to be some in Cumberland County or Anson County. It's just that I have to take the time. Now keep in mind too, when you do a book, before you can put anyone's that's living, anyone's image in that book, you have to get their permission. Mm -hmm. So I went to North Carolina back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, 
get a signature. And of course, I have some of my first grade students. And I still have a relationship with my, um, with some of my first grade students. In fact, one of my first grade students called me Wednesday and sang happy birthday to me. Wow. And when I tell people this, they say, you mean to tell me I can't even remember my first grade teacher's name? I say, well, they know I'm Miss Parker, and they call me Miss Parker Reese. And sometimes they say, Miss Parker, I say, it's okay. I know who I am. But I still have a relationship uh, with them. And you'll notice I have some pictures in there of my first grade students because I had, I think it was 11 of them at my 70th birthday celebration, because I didn't have a celebration. I haven't had a celebration this time, but I'm gonna do something, but I gotta wait till my husband returns before I do anything. I won't dare do anything, and he's on the West Coast. I'll wait until he comes back. So, if you would like, I would like for you to come up and let me autograph the book, the ones who purchased the book, please. I hope I didn't bore you with my childhood stories. Thank you. <coughs> she yes. Tell us more. Yeah. No.